Well, the judges and I have had a, a very busy morning talking to our teams, and we have one more left to go. Uh, let me introduce them. That We have three members of the team. We have Santosh Narayan from Munster High School in Munster, Indiana, and his uh, colleague is Nikhil Mahandru from uh, Roslyn High School in Roslyn Heights, New York. And then uh, Sonia Prasad is from the Wheatley School in Old Westbury, New York. And the three of them will be talking to us about uh, the lengthiest title of the morning, which is the Engineering Nanoscale Biosensors with Thermoreversible Hydrogels for a Dual Therapy of Cancer Detection and Tumor-Targeted Drug Delivery. Very interesting, and we hope that uh, uh, they'll come up and tell us about their engaging work. Good morning. My name is Santosh Narayan. These are my colleagues, Nikhil Mehandru and Sunir Prasad. We would first like to thank the Siemens Foundation and George Washington University for hosting us today. Our project is entitled Engineering Nanoscale Biosensors with Thermoreversible Hydrogels for a Dual Therapy of Cancer Detection and Tumor-Targeted Drug Delivery. Today, within the United States, cancer takes more than half a million lives each year. Specifically, pancreatic cancer has a five-year mortality rate of 94%. Consequently, it is becoming ever more essential to develop efficient methods for the one detection and the two treatment of cancer. We sought to design an efficient diagnostic platform for dual therapy of cancer detection and cancer treatment. We first engineered and applied a biosensor for cancer detection and then engineered and applied a hydrogel drug delivery system for cancer treatment. So let's start with our system for cancer detection. Our aim was to replace the expensive gold standard today, that is ELISA. To do so, we use molecular imprinting, or MI, through self-assembled monolayers, or SAMs. In specific, self, um, MI, MI biosensors function through a lock and key model, detecting proteins upon protein, detecting proteins upon a voltage response in, upon protein reoccupation in a monolayer. In specific, when choosing which SAM to employ, we, use, we found that old, old SAMs of trichloroacylines had numerous drawbacks. Hence, research has shifted to alkane thiols. In specific, we used 11 mercapto, 1 in decanol, because the chain length was long enough to induce an ordered monolayer, yet short enough to maintain its reduced steric tindrance. Lastly, the increased roughness of our gold substrate allowed, allowed for the combination of 2D and 3D MI biosensor advantages in a quasi-3D system. Next, for each biosensing test, we took a gold-plated silicon chip and placed it in an incubation solution consisting of a specific concentration of thiol, and a specific concentration of the target molecule, what you wish to sense for. As can be seen here, after preparation of the biosensor as shown in figure A, steps one to three, it was then placed in the testing setup as shown in figure B. Here, the biomarker was then reintroduced where it rebound to chemically and sterically complementary cavities, registering a potential metric response and indicating detection. Next, Junata showed that the magnitude of the electric potential differences as measured by the potentiometer are positively correlated to the amount of cavities reoccupied in solution, and hence the concentration of that target molecule within solution. Thus, we sought to vary the concentrations of thiol within individual incubation solutions so as to maximize the number of imprints in the monolayer. Next, Ullman showed that the time of thiol adsorption of step one in this diagram is concentration dependent. Thus, we realized that if we could also optimize the thiol concentration, we could optimize step two of this diagram where the uh, vaporized thiol molecules adsorb to the gold surface, creating a crystalline monolayer. We found that for both biosensors, 0 0.005 milligram per milliliter thiol provided the greatest change in electric potential response when exposed to their respective template molecules. Now, this me theoretically means that the greatest number of imprints occurred at this concentration. We then sought to confirm the specificity and the selectivity of our biosensor by comparing our optimal curve to three control tests. First, we ensured that the voltage response was not due to the DPBS in our testing solution. We then confirmed that the voltage response was due to the actual imprints in the monolayer. Lastly, we cross-tested the biomarkers to demonstrate the selectivity of our biosensor. We then varied the time of incubation to discover the time at which monolayer density would be maximized and the marginal cost of time would be minimized. After finding this time to be 30 minutes, we proceeded to create a single injection standard curve, optimizing the system for clinical applications, minimizing the potential drift, 
as well as finding that we had an, a very strong correlation between voltage and concentration, showing an R-squared value greater than 0.99. Next, we sought to visually confirm the formation of the monolayer through atomic force microscopy, AFM. As can be seen in the two images here, a second image of gold and thiol indicates individually dispersed thiol molecules at higher altitudes than the gold-only image, thus confirming the formation of the monolayer. Next, we sought to take our successful detection mechanism using a biosensor for CEA detection, and we compared it to the gold standard ELISA. So the two black um, columns showed the ELISA technique and our technique. When a percent error calculation was done to compare the two techniques, we found our maximum percent error was 2.33%, which is extremely low. We believe this highly accurate technique was uh, due to the uh, choice of SAM, as well as the increased roughness of our gold surface. So in summary, we created a quasi-3D biosensor for cancer detection that was deep, discriminatory, efficient, um, economical, and precise. Moving on to the second part of our experiment, we sought to create an optimal drug delivery system by obtaining a synergistic effect by physiosorption of two polymers. Theronic F127, a synthetic polymer, contributed both physiochemical similarities to biological tissue as well as thermoreversibility for controlled drug release. Hyaluronic acid, a natural polymer, contributed biocompatibility. Okay. Um, at the critical solution temperature, or CST, thoronic F127 transitions between, uh, between its liquid and gel state. Below the CST, F127 exists as a liquid solution, allowing for drug loading and drug release for thermally regulated drug delivery. Above the CST, uh, thoronic F127 exists as a gel. Through physiosorption of HA, the system formed physical interconnections and secondary bonds, increasing the mechanical strength of our system. We synthesized gels in varying ratios of HA to F127. Using rheology, we analyzed the G-prime elastic modulus under varying amplitudes of shear stress at 37 degrees Celsius and a predetermined frequency. We determined the optimal gel to be at a ratio of 1 to 20 HA to F127, since this gel displayed the same high G prime elastic modulus as did pure pleuronic F127, but it broke at a much higher percent shear stress. This demonstrated the strength of our physically cross-linked matrix. The optimal 1 to 20 gel, mixed with photo-initiator benzophenone, was then placed on a PMMA polymethyl methacrylate spuncast silicon wafer. The silicon wafer was then exposed to UVC light for 600 seconds and an intensity of 3,600 microwebers per centimeter squared to suspend the polymer in the gel state. To determine the optimal concentration of PMA required for this attachment, we conducted an endurance test. We subjected four different, four different spuncast silicon wafers of 20 mg per milliliter, 30, 40, and 50 mg per milliliter to a constant fluid shear force calculated through the fluid viscosity, fluid velocity, area of the wafer, and height of the gel. We discovered the 50 mg per milliliter gel to be optimal as it lasted for 11 days. We then proceeded to test the strength of this attachment by, uh, by exposing the gel to increasing laminar flow rates of water, simulating the bloodstream. We discovered that it could withstand 190 micronewtons of force, well above the levels in the bloodstream, demonstrating the stability of our gel. Next, we sought to improve the drug release rate from the hydrogel platform by attaching the silicon chip, when loaded with the hydrogel, to a TE module, which regulates temperature for a more controlled release of the drug. The TE module operates under the Peltier effect, where when an electric voltage is applied across two dissimilar semiconductors in circuit, uh, a temperature gradient is formed, creating a hot side and a cold side. As can be seen here, this whole setup was tested in three different configurations. One, 37 degrees Celsius water, two, when attached to an aluminum heat sink, and three, and eight degrees Celsius water. As can be seen, the efficiency is defined as temperature over voltage, and the highest slope, which was the efficiency, was found for the aluminum heat sink. We sought to apply our gel by loading it with a specific economical chemotherapeutic drug, namely folate conjugated platinum nanoparticles. These nanoparticles were coated with folic acid, which is a tumor targeting mechanism since cancer cells overexpress folate receptors on their cell membrane. We were able to synthesize these nanoparticles through redox reactions. We then viewed the nanoparticles under a transmission electron microscope and determined the average diameter of each particle to be approximately 2 nanometers. BXPC3 human pancreatic cancer cells were exposed to varying concentration, concentrations of these folate conjugated platinum nanoparticles. We then used MTS colorimetric assay to determine the I optimal IC50 concentration to be 435 micromolar. 
We then proceeded to load our setup with these, with these nanoparticles in two different setups. One applied to a TE module in a water bath, and the second left alone in a water bath. We tested the, we tested the release of the nanoparticles through an absor absorbance curve through uv vis spectroscopy, plotting absorbance versus concentration. We found that the TE module increased the release rate by 42.6%, as shown in the graph here. And we believe that this is because of the opening of the micelles and releasing the rate of the nanoparticles at colder temperatures. Hence, we created a hydrogel composite for cancer treatment that was BET, biocompatible, economical, thermoreversible, and tumor targeted. In conclusion, as part of the first aim of our project, we were able to, one, optimize thiol and biomarker concentration, two, determine the selectivity of our biosensor, three, determine the um, optimal incubation time or testing time, and four, develop a standard curve for detecting CEA in solution in known quantities. We then established our system as an accurate quantitative assay for detecting CEA in um, pancreatic cyst fluid. As part of our second aim, we one, engineered a novel tumor-targeted and thermoreversible hydrogel composite of HA and F127. Two, proved our system's mechanical strength under simulated physiological conditions. Three, apply the synthesized platinum folate nanoparticles as a chemotherapeutic agent. And four, use TE module simulation to improve release rate by 42.6%. In the near future, we aim to take our composite hydrogel when loaded with nanoparticles and expose it to normal and cancerous pancreatic cells to demonstrate its applicability in vitro. Next, we would like to take an endoscope and attach both the biosensor and the hydrogel platform when loaded with a chemotherapeutic agent and use it for in vivo applications allowing for real-time detection as well as treatment of a myriad of gastrointestinal cancers. Our ultimate goal is to create a medical device which would combine for a coupled method of uh, cancer detection and treatment uh, with a communication mechanism that would allow for the um, regulated release of a drug as uh, needed by the individual patient's response to cancer. These are the references that we cited in this presentation today. We would just like to thank the following institutions and people for all their help and support. We would also like to thank the National Foundation for Science for funding our research and Garcia Mercek um, and everybody else who helped us along the way. Thank you.